So the first thing we need to think about when we're developing an experiment is what is the experiment going to do? What are we testing? Now, there are a couple of key things we need to remember when we're coming up with this testable question. Now, sometimes you'll be asked to write an aim. This is the aim of our experiment. The testable question is what we would write here. Now, there are a couple of characteristics of testable questions that I'd like to go over. Firstly, I'd like to give you two questions as an example for you to ponder. So, question one, how does fertilizer affect growth of bean plants? Question two, what is an electromagnet? In our subject, you are asked to do two key areas of science. First one is experiments and the second one is research. Now, experiments are asking you to do something or to check something or to test something, whereas research is asking you to go and find the information that's already been produced about it, analyze that, and then come up with your own opinions. You can clearly see that these two questions are very different. So before we go into why these two questions are different, Ask yourself this, if, which one would you say is a testable question? As you can see, this top question is definitely the testable question out of the two. This one is more of a research question that would lead you into how an electromagnet works. So, what are the characteristics of a testable question? So, the first thing is they're often how questions or what questions. The other one was a what question, but the interesting thing is, is how does something affect something or what is the effect of something on something else? So I guess that leads us into the other key aspect of our testable questions. They are one thing affecting another thing. Now that word thing is a horrible word and we don't like to use it in science, but I will be developing that word thing into another word you will have heard before, variable, very soon. So it's how does one thing affect another thing of an object or a test subject. Finally, the most important part of a testable question is that you can answer this question by collecting something very important, and that is this. Data. Without data, we can't justify why we have sided with one way or another of our answers. Data is what gives us clear evidence that we have worked out whether or not this, in this case, fertilizer affects our plants. So I talked about that word before, variable. Now we have a couple of types. Can you think what they are? Did you get these? So we need to remember the three types of variables when we are approaching and designing an experiment. So those are the independent, the dependent, and what we are going to control in our experiment. We can't really write a testable question unless we understand what these things are. So what are each of these variables? So as scientists, we need to ensure what we are doing in our experiment is accurate. We need to make sure we are only changing one thing at a time and controlling everything else. And also looking for something specific to take data and record our results through. In this case, we have three different types of variables. Let's use our testable question we wrote before as a way to explain these. So firstly, we have the independent variable. Now the independent variable is the one thing, often when we're independent we are by ourselves, the one thing that we are going to change. Okay, so the one thing we're going to change in this experiment. Now looking at our testable question, what is the one thing that you think we're going to change? Did you say fertilizer? Awesome, now in this case we might have different types of fertilizer.
Okay, or we might have fertilizer or no fertilizer. Whatever it is, we're only going to change that one thing, which means we're going to have to control some other things. That's where our controlled variables come in. So for example, we can't change the type of fertilizer and then water them all different amounts. Water, we have to keep that the same. So this is what we're keeping the same. And this could be the type of water and the amount. This could be the amount of soil or the type of soil we're using. This could be the amount of sun exposure the plant will have. Could even be the amount of time you talk to that plant to see to keep that as a controlled variable as well. But how are we going to test whether or not the fertilizer, if we're keeping all of these things the same, is working? We've got to measure something, and that's where the dependent variable comes in. This is what we measure. Now in this, we're asked to measure growth. Now growth can be measured in a number of ways, but one of the simplest ways will simply be the height of our plant. Now, why did I tell you all of this before we move into the method of having to work out all of these things? Well, it's quite important to write a good aim. We can't write an aim if we don't know how to write a testable question, and a testable question must include your independent and dependent variables. So, how do we write a good aim? Let's look at this example again. How does fertilizer, which is the independent variable, affect the growth, which is our dependent variable, of our bean plants? Now I've got to introduce control variables here, just because we're looking at the other two, it makes sense to include this one, but that will come in really handy in part three of the scientific method, how to do the method. So there you have it, how to write a testable question, how to do the aim of our experiment. Must include our independent and dependent variables in a testable question, something that you can collect data to answer. I hope that makes how to write a name a lot clearer for you. Please come and see me in class if I can clarify anything that you've heard in this video. See you there.